aya paya da aya paya da aya paya da aya paya da rapaya ndiri bikata le brada bazandi bianda rapa ndiri bianda le brada bazandi bikata imando la brada bazandi bianda ika paya na brada bazandi bianda aya ndiri bikata ndara bazandi bianda aya pa ndiri bikapa ya na le brado shata ya na imazandi bikata aya ndiri bikapa ndiri bianda imazandi bikapa ndara baba aya ndiri bikata ya na baba re anta ya ndiri bianda rapa ya ndiri bikata imazandi bianda bazandi bianda ika brada bara 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 aya araba baba bazandi bianda rapa ndiri bikata ya na baba e andara bazandi bikata aya ndiri bikapa ya na baba randi bikata ya na e anta ya ndiri bianda aya brada bara baba 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 re paya na re paya na re paya na re paya na e 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 paya na ra paya 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 ayanta 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 ra paya 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 ayan diri bika thaya na baba re ma sa thaya ndele biane e ka prada bazan diri biana e andolo prada bazan diri biane e ka prada bazan diri bika tha e an diri bika pan diri biana e anda bazan diri bika tha e ka prada bazan diri biana e an thaya thaya baba ayan diri bika payan diri biane ra pan diri bika thaya na bazan ne ra pa pan diri biana le prado sha thaya ari anda bazan diri bika tha e ka pran diri bika tha diri biana e ma sa thaya diri biana bazan diri biane ra payan diri bika pan diri biana ra pa diri bika tha e ma sa diri biana bazan diri biane ra ka payan diri bika tha e ma sa diri biana do bra ra ba ayan diri bika payan na bazan diri biane ra payan da na bazan diri bika tha e ma sa diri bika paya na baba ari anda bazandri bika paya ne ika brada bazandri bia ne jesus maro shata arandi bika taya araba baba sandri bika ta e mazandri bika pandri bia ne ra paya ndri bika paya na baba raba ro shata ya arandi bika taya na raba zande rika paya ndri bika paya na arandi bika taya na baba e abra ro shata ya ne arasa tandri bia na lika do shata ari mazandri bia na ra pa paya na baba zande e karo shentelelele beha arima suko thoriana abrandri bika thaya ndara bazande e masuko thoriande ari anda bazandri bika tha aprofeteri mazandri biana arabadi andolo boshandri biana abraka paya na baba arandri bika thaya ne e masuko thoriana bazandri biana ari anda bazandri bika paya na baba abradi anda bazandri bika tha e antolo lobosha ari ande ande ari ande ande rapandri bika paya na arabandri bika thaya ne aroshe ke ni mazane aya paya na bazada ba 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 arasa thaya ne ne lika bradio sha arima santele lele be na paya na bazande be ne li brada baba bazande ikaro sha thaya arabandri bika tha arima setele bo sha araba baba 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 e ka paya ndiri bika tha e andiri bika tha ndiri bia na re antara bazandiri bika pa abradi o santele bia na li brada bazandiri bika tha e kara bazara ba ari anda bazandiri bika tha anda bazande li karo sha tha ndiri bia na ba ka brado sha tha mari anda bazandiri bia ne lori thank you ma kari onda bazandiri bia na mari anda bazandiri bika pa e ka brada bo sha tha ara ba 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 bazande e ka ndiri bika tha anda ba ba the lord alone ma kari anda ma ri anda bazande ra pa pa ya ne ra pa pa ya ne ra pa pa ya ne ra pa pa ya rapa payane rapa payane rapa payane rantayane ikabra rabasandiri biana ayandiri bikap 
Bayana, a broshen telelebeha, Rika Bra Bariana, Mahroshen telelebe, Raka Pandibicata, a Rabandibianda Rabazante, Lima Satanibianda, Likorobo Shataya, a Rima Sandibicapa, Maroshen telelebeana, thank you, Jesus, a Rapa Paya, a Yapayana, a Yandibicata, a Yandibicata, a Yandibicata, Lima Sendelebosha, a Rima Zima Tayana. Maka prada ba 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 aya aya telele bo shara bra paya na bazande li ma sendi di bianda arianto la bosha marianda bazandi di kata i ma zandi di bianda bazanda da baba i kabra da ba da ba aya ndi di ka paya ne maro shentelele be arabandi di kata i ma sataya then we begin to fear but we are praying that this, informa- this particular information that we are about to be given or what we are about to learn here today shall not decrease our faith. Rather, it shall be a tool that will challenge us to trust in the Lord the more. Hallelujah. Shall we begin to pray? Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Maru shenderebe. Li kadabazandi di bikata. Li pradabazandi di biando lobosha. Ri kaprangi di bikata. Ma telelele brerebe anda. Li prangi di bikata. Ri anabazandi di bianda. Li pro di kari anda baba. I andi di bikapa yandi anda. Li prado shandi di bikata yandi anda. I mata yandi di bikapa yana bari anda. Li prado shandi di bikapa ya. Li kadi anabazandi di bikapa yani. Ri pandi di bikata yana baba. I andabazandi di bikapa yana bari baba. Every spirit of fear, Makoro Shadababa, we drive it away now. Rapandi Bikataya, Barada Rian Tarababa, may our faith in the Lord, Rapandi Bikapa, be increased. Rantelebo Shadababa, Arianda Bazandi Bikata, Eka Brandi Bikapayanda, Eanda Bazandi Bikapayanaba, Le Prada Barian. Let's begin to thank the Lord. Lord, we thank you. In the mighty name of Jesus. You <speaking in Spanish> Ye 
worship your sovereignty, Lord. Hallelujah. For the Lord God of my spirit. We worship you, Lord, tonight. We say.
like that from my heart, Lord. song hallelujah are you glad to be in the house of the lord are you glad to be in the house of the lord oh say yeah. i can't hear you we say oh say yeah in sembo in sembo in sembo say Praise the Lord in the 
Kindly be seated. Thank you. God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. We thank God for the health week. The Bible says that I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospers. Amen. Amen. So God desires that we live in health. And the Bible also says that for lack of knowledge, my people perish. You know, some of the things that go through in our lives is just because of lack of knowledge. And knowing about your health does not mean that you are unspiritual or your faith is low. But some of the things God has given us the wisdom that we need so that by our lifestyle or by knowledge, certain diseases, certain illnesses will not affect our lives. Amen. Because when you look in the book of Leviticus, from chapter 13, 14, and 15, there were times when people, when people had certain diseases, and God told them to, they should show themselves to the priest. And if those diseases are contagious, sometimes the people are asked to go out of the camp, so that the people are not infected. You know, and as I was thinking about it, I was asking that why should God, who is a healer, ask that these people should not be among them. He knew that if they are among them, they would affect other people, they would infect other people. But he said these ones should be isolated. So even way back in those days, God knew that certain diseases are contagious. You know, tonight our topic is viral hepatitis, which is a contagious disease. How can we prevent that? And that is one thing I believe that by the time we leave here, we'll gain the knowledge that we need so that we can prevent this from happening in our lives. Amen. So tonight we are blessed to have a woman of God. She fellowships with the Apostolic Church. She's a consultant physician at the Kolobu Teaching Hospital. And we are blessed to have her in our midst. So with a round of applause, I want to welcome Dr. Ajwa Ajay to come and share with us. Amen. Oh, let's clap so, so she gets on stage. Amen. So please put down all the information. Any questions? I'll question be I will try to her. She will share with us briefly and she'll give us enough time to ask all the questions. Into all the questions that you have about hepatitis, 
It's in the newspapers, everywhere. Make sure you get your answer tonight. Amen. You're welcome. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In fact, there's one important thing we should know. As she rightly said, we should prosper in our health as well. Spiritually, yes, we need to prosper. But if our bodies, we don't take good care of our bodies, then we cannot fulfill what scripture said is that we should go into the world and make disciples. There was this man who was a Presbyterian priest. He did a lot of work in the UK. And at the age of 25, he had about 2,000 congregational members. Had a lot. And he was always doing the work of God. And he passed on at age 25. And just before he died, there's something he said that I read, I will never forget. He said, God gave me word, but I did not take care of the horse. So now the word is there, but the horse is no longer strong enough to do the work. And by that, the horse is our body. So we need the horse to take God's word to the people. So we need to take good care of ourselves. Now, I want to thank the organizers of this meeting for this opportunity to come and share little, something little on hepatitis, viral hepatitis. And I pray that the Holy Spirit will help us acquire more knowledge in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. Um, I will stand, I want to make this very interactive, so I decided I wasn't going to do a PowerPoint presentation. So if you have any questions, and I'm going to mix the languages. I speak English, Chi, and a little bit of Ga. So I'll try and make so that we all understand. And I'll, I will not use medical jargons. Okay. Now, we have so much about hepatitis. And when we say hepatitis, it's actually two words that we have combined. Anytime you hear hepa, it means liver. Itis means inflammation. What do we mean by inflammation? You know, when you get a cut, you have some pain, but the next day or two, it's swollen. Okay, that act of it getting swollen and painful is what we call inflammation. In the same way, when you have inflammation of the liver, then we say hepatitis. So let me tell you a very simple one. If you have problems with your pockets, Okay, there's no money in your pocket. Medically, how will you call it? Inflammation, so it be what? Pocketitis, okay. So itis means there's a problem over there. Now when we talk about hepatitis, lots of things can cause hepatitis. One of the common causes is alcohol. That's why we always say that be careful when you are taking alcohol because alcohol can destroy the liver. And there are also certain drugs that can affect the liver as well. And one of the drugs, the common ones are the, some of the herbal drugs we take. There are lots of advertisements, etc. And most, every, most of the things we take in is worked on by the liver. And sometimes the byproducts may not be too good for the liver, may actually be harmful to the liver and can cause inflammation of the liver, causing hepatitis. The other common ones we have here is the viral hepatitis. Viral means it's due to virus. And virus is a type of germ that can affect the liver. When we talk about viral hepatitis, there are different types. We have hepatitis A, B, C, D, and E. Most of the time we hear about B and C. The reason why we, have B, we talk more of B and C is that it causes chronic disease. What I mean is that when you get hepatitis A, within six weeks, their body will clear it, so there's no problem. But for hepatitis B, it can stay with you for the rest of your life. In the same way, hepatitis C can be with you for the rest of your life. So we say you have chronic hepatitis B and C. So today, we're going to talk more about hepatitis B and hepatitis C. Nitia we munyamakani say a kase vara hepatitis A. A ya mwa wan kitin kiti biya e ya na e ha brebono. Na sa a de we no so so brebono ya di be ye juma bebre ewe ye ni pedwenum. Bibiti se ensa, bibiti se indrua brofundro ni bi. 
ene e bibidro ni bi eso etimi ese brebo no na se nkura ne ye hu no se srade bebre e fa wo brebo no ho a eno so so etimi ma hepatitis but ene ne ye ka hu no e sa mo awan kitin kitin na ye from viruses no omo a omo cause ne wo mu ahodo bebre be insia na ne e ha adwe ye mienu bi mienu no na de bia ye ka hu asem e fi se e ba wo mu a etimi e ye kwan ko it me ni what na a febo in sister would see me a saw no a boa into a baby be sa say a day would see day in ya hepatitis b semi two way then a chess and mania and as a quiet band so and a mania hepatitis b we can acquire hepatitis b through many forms one a pregnant woman who has hepatitis b can pass the infection on to their children. So through pregnancy and delivery, a child can get exposed to the virus. Now, sometimes the other way of acquiring the infection is what we call horizontal transmission. We are in the house. Somebody has the infection. That person uses a razor or something sharp, okay? And then you also use that thing, blade, etc. You get a cut. Etc. That, that can also cause hepatitis B. Now another way is sharing sharps. Sometimes you school blades, etc. You sharpen, you get a cut, you pass it on to your friend. That can also give you hepatitis B and C. Then tattoos. You know now most people have all sorts of drawings on their skin. And when they are doing that, they use special needles. And if these needles are not well sterilized, if it's used on somebody with hepatitis B, the needle gets infected, and then when it's used on you, you can also get infection. Sometimes you go to the barbering shop. They use the razor blade, okay, to do their barbering. People, lots of people, after going to the barbering shop, get lots of cuts. You may not know, but sometimes when they clean with their methylator spirit, you find that that place burns. It tells you that there's been little, little cuts. And little little bleeding so that blood gets onto the machine so if it's used on another person and that person gets the cut you are transferring the virus from the other person into you so that is one way of acquiring the infection and with the women when you go and fix our weave ones the needles they use the long ones sometimes it chokes you okay and you have tiny blood on the needle and if this needle is not sterilized or changed and is used on another person, that can also cause transmission of the virus. And then through blood transfusion, maybe I say, but the good thing is that now we screen the blood before we transfuse. But there is still a little risk of getting the infection through blood transfusion. Another way of getting the infection is through sexual intercourse. Okay, when one partner has the infection, that partner can pass it on to the other. The good thing is that hepatitis B is so, so common in our part of the world. And when you take our part of the world, we say that the incidence or the prevalence, the number of people, if you take 100 people, at least 12 to 15 people will have hepatitis B. If you compare to HIV, that would make so much noise. If you take 100 people, you get about two, maximum three people. But with hepatitis B, every 100 people, you get 12 to 15 of them having the infection. So it's very, very common in our environment. Now, how will somebody with hepatitis B present? Before that, let me translate into three. Nyama kani se, esi den obi, enya sa mwa ewo ni mu. Ebi wa hana maaminu, a o nyinsen, ebi wa ni mojem. Inti awo munu sa wo wa na moja ya akulano hu. Inti through that no, obeti mi di ama akulano. Ebi wa hon suwa, ye ti fiye no, obi ewo bi. Na ye shen ni eme fiye bi waha, obi jani tu brasha. Oun so sometimes tu chuchu usi ambo se moja eba. O jani tu brasha, wana another person afa, no de chuchu. Ebi waha blade, we di shevi. O jatu wana another person. Ni ama bebre personal things biya, ye yusi ye sharps no. It's me, a massa, ya reno, eba. A bisusu or ha, say ya draw draw ya, who ya call, when ya draw draw near me, a goo ya, who a friend, a tattoo, no, 
and also eighty me at the area no ema ye. And I see a call bring shop now machine no. A man sterilizing ye. And I saw man fan she machine mu ama mu wana e wu wo mu a. And also eighty me ma unya area no. Eni e ka se ma no. Time ye she we for na ye palm no. Pan ye no ye de palm no. E wo uti asi. Ne bi a mo jaya no. Ye the same pan ye no ko palm wo bi ne wana. Eti me ema onipa no enya infection. Ebi su wo ha wa yari ako hospital ne si ema o moja. Si yan shu she moja ni mu ye ne ebi wo mni ye de mawa. Ube eti me enya yari eno. Anase oba ni mbe ema nde mu. Se ba ku wo bia ebe eti me abase. Ube eti me edi ama ni nyonko. Inti saane ye faso enya sa yari. No bi nya yari ya ye be si den na ye hun. Ebi wo ha wo nya yari ena infiti ase eno. Bebre na unya ni mkwala brema. Ye mwushu ye. Uni mtese ye ti hei. Ye mwa hini ye ni mtese ye wa hepatitis B. Ye ni. Inti ya ba ni ya siye biya ye ba be shese ye mwje ma. Ye be peki e bi e fi. So what I'm saying is that with hepatitis, chronic hepatitis, most of the time people don't have any symptoms. They are only picked up when they go to the lab and test. The problem is that most people get to know that they have hepatitis B when they have complication of the disease. Now, to understand complication of the disease, we need to know the function of the liver. Who can give me one example of function of the liver? How does your liver work? One example. Should I come down? Any volunteer? Yes, please. Very good. It regulates the sugar. Okay? Just like we are. When you have lots of money, you don't want to keep all the money in your pocket. We deposit some in the bank. So when you eat, the body will pick up what it needs and then the rest will be deposited. Okay? Like treasury bills in the liver. So the sugar will be... So when you are fasting, then the liver will put sugar into your blood. Okay? If there's too much sugar, the liver keeps it. That's one function of the liver. Okay. The other function of the liver is that it removes what we call toxic substances, dirty things, waste things that the body does not need. It works on them and then is able to get rid of them. And then it also produces very important things. We call them clotting factors. Anytime you get a cut, you know with, within a short time the blood stops. It's because of these clotting factors that stop the bleeding. And this is produced by the liver. It also produces one very important thing. We call it albumin. Albumin, the egg white, we call it albumin. It's a special protein. And what it does is that blood is supposed to be running in the vessel, just like water and pipe. You know that water should run through the pipelines, okay? Now, if there's a problem with the liver, that protein will go down, and then the water will start seeping outside the vessel. So you notice that their feet will get swollen and then their tummy gets bigger and bigger. So you see men sometimes you don't know if they are pregnant or not. It's because the liver is not producing the special protein. So one of the complications that may arise, usually the normal liver is like full. If you are firstborn and you are going to SHS for the first time, you see how your mattress is. It's quite thick and it's really foamy. You lie on it. If you're unfortunate and you are the last born and your parents have 10 children, by the time you get to SHS, what will happen to the mattress? It will be very, very flat. So that's what happens to the liver. The normal liver is like fresh mattress, okay? It's very spongy. Now, when you have inflammation going on, the injury going on, anytime you have injury, the healing is what? Scar. If you get a cut, you get a scar. So it gets smaller and smaller and smaller. And once it does that, we say that you have what we call cirrhosis or chronic liver. And once you have that, there are things that the liver normally will do that it will not be able to do. So while some of the symptoms may be bleeding, and sometimes they may have jaundice, that is yellow discoloration, notice that the white part of the eye becomes yellow. And then the tummy gets bigger, their feet get swollen. And then in men, they start developing breasts. The reason is that the liver, men produce a little bit 
of the female hormones. Okay? So as soon as it produces, the liver will just clear it from the system because you're a man. Immediately it's taken out. Now the liver is not working, so the little that you produce gets accumulated. So they have what we call excessive estrogen or female hormones. So gradually they start becoming females. So the main thing is their breast. They start developing breast. And then, you know, when you look at the hair, in females, our hair is like a triangle with a top part pointing down. So the hair cuts this way. But the men, the hair will grow up to the navel or the umbilicus. Okay? That hair will start changing to become that of a female. The other difference between a man and a woman is the testicles. True or false? How many of us women have testicles in the room? None. Okay. Because we don't have testosterone. But because estrogen is increasing, the body says that if you want to be a woman, then the testicles should become what? Smaller. So the testicles should become very, very small, and then you start developing breasts. But one of the main feared complications when it comes to hepatitis, the viral hepatitis, is cancer, liver cancer. Okay, so if you have somebody with hepatitis and you don't manage or monitor them very well, long term they may develop liver cancer. And sometimes by the time we find out that they have liver cancer, it may be too late. So now we ask ourselves, how do we then prevent viral hepatitis so that we don't get hepatitis? If you look at how it is acquired, one of the good things with hepatitis B is that it is preventable. And how do we prevent it? If you do the test and you don't have hepatitis B, you go for vaccine. So most, we usually, the parlance that we use, you go for weighing. Like when you go for weighing, they give them injection. That's vaccination. So there's a type of injection that you are given to protect you so you don't get the viral hepatitis if you don't have it. Okay, and that injection is taken three times. So if you start the injection today, today is day zero, you take your injection. Exactly one month, you should take a second one. Between six months up to a year, you take a third one. Once you've taken all the three, then you are protected. If you look at the way it is acquired, that means that you should not share chaps like blades, needles, etc., so I admonish that if you are going to the salon, please get your own razor thing, send it there, they use it on you, you bring it back home because you don't know whom this has been used on. You know, they put it in some blue light. It's supposed to kill the gems, but you need to change that light sometimes every three to six months. But how many people do change it? So to be very safe, you have your own thing. If you're a woman, pedicure, manicure, if you are going... You take your own thing, your nail cutter, etc., for you to work on. Now, one of the questions that usually comes is that, so let's assume that I have hepatitis B. Can I marry anybody? I'm hepatitis B. How many of us, the men here, is willing to marry me? Are you people, you don't have faith. Okay. So if somebody has hepatitis B, it doesn't mean that that person cannot marry. You can marry the person. If you are negative, what you do is that you go for the vaccine, the three vaccines, the zero after one month, then six to 12 months. Once you take the vaccine, you are protected. So you can marry the person, you can have children without any problem. Now, what do I eat if I have hepatitis B? If you have chronic hepatitis B or chronic viral hepatitis, the chronic ones, normal diet, just like any other person. You can eat everything. Now, some people may have what you call acute hepatitis, where they are very sick, their eyes are very yellow, they are throwing up, they are vomiting. When it comes to the acute phase, what we do is that we ask them to cut down on protein. So meat should be down, no oil. But when the jaundice and everything disappears, they go back to their normal diet. So if you go and do the test, maybe you don't have any symptoms. You did the test and you have hepatitis B, you can eat everything. 
There are two things that usually we say that if you have hepatitis B, don't go near. One is alcohol. Two is herbal medicine. The reason is that alcohol, as we initially said, can destroy the liver. So if you have hepatitis B or C there, that is trying to destroy your liver, and you add on alcohol, then the rate of destruction of the liver increases. So you don't take alcohol. We are Christians, so I assume that is not a problem. Or is it? I'm not getting the response. Yes and no. Oh, okay. So, and then as much as possible, we need to avoid herbal medicine because some of the herbal drugs we take can actually destroy the liver. So you have this already challenge with your liver and then you're adding insults to injury. So we, as much as possible, we don't recommend that if you have hepatitis B, don't take alcohol and don't use herbal medicine. One may also ask, is this something that can be cured? Hepatitis B can be managed. Okay? So if you have hepatitis B, what we do is there are a series of lab tests you will do. And the lab test will tell us or give us an idea if you need to be on drug treatment or not. And there are different drugs. Some of the drugs are tablets. Others are injections. The only problem is that the injection is so expensive. You know, the Ghanaian mentality, we think that expensive drugs work better than cheap drugs. It's not always so. We have found out that the tablet works very well for hepatitis B. And these tablets can be taken sometimes for life if you have hepatitis B. Now, for those with hepatitis C, the good thing is that now there are newer drugs. We call them direct-acting antiviral drugs. And within three months, when we give, about 99% of the people get cured from hepatitis C. So C means what? Curable. The C is curable. But B, we don't cure. It is not curable, but it can be suppressed. Once you suppress the virus to very low levels, the risk of developing all these complications I've talked about is very, very low. So you can be cohabiting, living with the virus in you, but not harming you in any way. So, um, in a nutshell, Niamh Pesa Mekani say, Hepatitis mwa wa neseba wu mwa, indro wo ho, aye timi yusi. Enyo biya na hepatitis bi ni ba ni mwa, wo hi edro, bu ho nanka fa ni ba imbo na nyami di she muno, e timi fighting infection. But on mwa ba imbo ni inti muno, ni ye ma omu edro. And hepatitis B, no, so see your opania, your wo, se winnie beer. As our opania, a bebo who buy senior beya, unya, sa hepatitis B, no ebi. Nemo so hepatitis B, ne, and chess a wound to me, and worry, and as a wound to me, and wo. Nya winning in nomino, se winnie beer, as or call opania, ne, a bonny home buy. O to me, opania, me, and sunny beer, mobet to me at now, or say, or you're in your canoe, a mammy, ma wo, a problem beer, any home. Se maminu su wobia, ya wo indru a ye de bwa sen ye be ya akolano un yebi. Inti ya wu akolana ya wonu panye a hu dru mienu. Sen ye be ya ebe bwa kolano hu bain emmanu e nya sa ya rienu ebi. Inti hepatitis b nu eye virus bia ya re bia yen timi ein twasi ye. Insu ye timi brenna se sen ye be ya en hao. Na hepatitis C no eni de yetimi ma edru e ma no etimi eyi free ho. Sabri met na since obi wo question bia ni we bisa na discussion as that. Madam Ase. Hallelujah. Well, let's give her another round of applause. Okay, the mic is going around, so please, if you have any question, please lift up your hand, and then we'll take the question. Thank you. And um, please, you're like, um, 
if you have it and you, you can marry. And then um, that's the, the other person when he takes the uh, vaccines. I mean, nothing happens. But I, I want to ask if, um, let's say the man is the one carrying the, um, the virus and then um, have a affair with the woman. Are, are you saying that nothing will happen to even a child, like when they give birth to the child, since the man is the carrier? Okay, so if the man is the carrier, then the woman should have the vaccination, the three. Once the woman has had all these three, she's protected. Do you get it? The risk of the man transferring the infection to the unborn child is zero. Now, what happens is that the good thing is that for the past 15 years, any child who is born in Ghana is vaccinated, and that vaccine includes hepatitis B. So if the mother is negative and delivers, the vaccinations, the weighing, as we say it, includes hepatitis B. So that child is, has been vaccinated against hepatitis B, so there's no problem. The only thing is that hepatitis C, there's no vaccine for hepatitis C. It's only for hepatitis B that is preventable. So if you want to prevent hepatitis C, all the risk factors, sherry needles, sharps, razor blades, etc., you need to be careful. That's the only way to prevent acquiring hepatitis C infection. Okay. I also wanted to ask, um, what, what is the, since the hepatitis is, is, a, is, a viral, is a viral disease, I want to know the difference between the HIV and that one. How, what was the difference, since they are all virus? Okay, thank you. So let me rephrase your question. Since we are all Ghanaians, you know, although we are all Ghanaians, we have Gans, we have Ashantis, that's the same thing. They are all, the whole group is virus. But under that, we have different things, depending on what you are doing. Viral hepatitis, because its target is the liver. HIV's target is your defense system. That's why I say, human immunodeficiency, so it will target your defense system and bring it down. So the mode of acquisition, how we acquire both, is the same way. There's no change. The only thing is that, the other thing is that both are not curable. You can't cure hepatitis B, you can't cure HIV, but you can suppress both. Now, if you have somebody with HIV, or you see blood on the floor, within a few seconds to a minute, that blood, the HIV, is denatured, is destroyed. But with hepatitis B, even if it's a clot of blood, two weeks, the virus is still active. So it makes it more infectious than HIV. So if you are walking and you see an old blood there, you are not afraid of HIV. You are rather afraid of hepatitis B. That's the difference. Okay. Um, I have Six questions, but I'll ask the first one. The first one is, I'm told that you can contract hepatitis B through sweat. Is that true? Okay, so let's talk about the myth associated with hepatitis B. Hepatitis B is not acquired through sweat, through casual contact. When I say casual contact, when I hold it this way, I don't get. Otherwise, all the patients we have examined, or every doctor, would be hepatitis B. So casual contact, no. Kissing, no. Okay, when you kiss somebody with hepatitis B, you will not get. Sharing the same cup, spoons, you don't get hepatitis B. It's blood and blood products. These are the main ways of acquiring the infection. I remember there was a patient who came in who had hepatitis B. He had to go and build his own bathroom, his own kitchen, because he didn't want to infect the children in Ghana. You know, it doesn't. Casual contact, no. Okay. And even if the person has, make sure that you've had the vaccine. And once you have the vaccine, you can live together as a family without any problem. Okay. So the second question is, is it once vaccinated, forever free? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, I understand your question. You know, we used to say that every 10 years, you need to do the vaccination, no. If you get one of the things with vaccination is that the, the vaccine should be potent. It should work. 
And then we have what we call cold chain. It should be in ice. There's a temperature that you need to keep it. So in the days of doom, so you bring the vaccine, there's heat, etc. Sometimes you don't get a good one. But if you have good quality and you take all the three vaccines, it's supposed to carry you for life. If you are not too sure, there's a test we do. It's called the hepatitis B surface antibody titus. It actually tells you your level of defense. And if it's below five, it means that you are still not immune or the body cannot protect you, so you need to do the full vaccine again. Once it's more than 10, it means you are immune. The vaccine worked very well for you. So the important thing is where you get your vaccine, how the vaccine is stored, where the vaccine was acquired is important. Number three. Number three, is it safe for pregnant women and um, if the pregnant woman takes the vaccine, does it automatically protect the child as well or the child has to go through his own um, immunization? We only vaccinate those who are hepatitis B negative. Okay, so if the mother is vaccinated, when the child comes, that child will also be vaccinated. Do you get it? If the mother in pregnancy, if the mother is negative and goes for the three vaccines, if the child is born, that child should also go through the vaccination process. Any other questions? Yeah. For instance, someone takes the vaccine, the vaccine once, twice, and doesn't take it again. After some time, should the person start the full process again or he can take it like that? No, you see, because if you take it like that, you have a false assurance that you are protected. So there are two ways that we do. One is to check for your level of defense against hepatitis B. That's what I mean by the titus. If after the second vaccination, your titus are fine, we actually recommend a booster, a third one. However, if you did only one, it's like you attended school class one and you dropped out, start all over again. If you took only one, start all over again. If you took two and you checked your titles and it's high, get a booster. That is the third one. Okay. You, you just said that a part cannot be contacted when the people kiss. Suppose that um, if understand is transmitted by blood, they have, somebody has a wound or something in his mouth and they kiss, how come the person cannot transmit the disease? Okay, good. So for me to get the infection, you should have a sore in your mouth and I should also have a sore in my mouth and it should be aggressive kissing such that you bleed and then I accept your virus. And how many of us will kiss somebody with ulcers in their mouth? It's, theoretically, we ask the question. But practically, if you open your mouth and it's... Unless, of course, you are biting, biting yourself, okay? Then that's because of the blood component. That puts you at risk. But normal kissing will not give you hepatitis B. Or should I say pegs will not give you hepatitis B. Unless, of course, your type of kissing is a very aggressive one. I would want to see your wife. <laughs> Please, do we have any more questions? I have two questions. And the first question is, you said some of the symptoms of the flat liver or the shrink liver is bleeding. Please, what type of bleeding are you talking about? So where is the bleeding coming from? Okay. And the second question is, you mentioned the types of virus that cause the viral hepatitis, but I didn't mention the name. So please, can we know the types of virus that cause that? Okay. So maybe I mentioned the name, but you did not hear. I said the viruses, we have 
hepatitis A, hepatitis B, C, D, and E. And A and E will cause acute infection. And we concentrated on B and C because that one will give you long-term infection and the complications associated with it. Now, with the bleeding, one of the things we said is that the liver is able to produce certain chemicals so that when you get, you know normally when you get a cut, within a short time the bleeding stops. It's because the liver is producing certain chemicals. Now, this liver is not working. It's not producing the chemicals. So if you get a cut, you bleed. Sometimes they bleed from their mouth, their nose, everywhere, any of their openings. That doesn't mean that any person who is bleeding from the nose has a shrunken liver, no. Sometimes when your BP goes up, there are lots of causes. So when somebody bleeds, we consider the liver as well, but we look for other reasons why the person is bleeding. I hope I'm clear. Okay. And please, you said um, um, you said there are no uh, symptoms. So supposing, okay, since there are no symptoms, and and let's say I take the vaccination, and I find out that I have it. I mean, okay. how yeah, how how will you know? Like what I said was, before you go for the vaccine, you should do the test. If you already have the virus, you don't need to vaccinate. The essence of the vaccination is to protect you from getting the infection. Once you have the infection, instead of protection, you want to make sure that you suppress the virus. You get, so if per adventure you didn't know and you went for the vaccine and you, you have the infection, it will not do anything. We need to investigate and see whether your hepatitis B, in terms of the amount of virus in the blood, you need to be treated or not. You also said that um, um, concerning the, the functions of the liver, um, I said it regulates the sugar. So um, you said one shouldn't take alcohol so that like, the person will not get the virus. What about excessive sugar? Does it also um, create a chance of getting the, the virus? Okay, let me do a little correction. Okay. I didn't say alcohol will bring the virus. What I said, if you have the virus, this virus is already destroying your liver. And then you are adding on alcohol. So it destroys it faster. So alcohol is not good if you have hepatitis B. Now, sugar, too much sugar too much of everything is bad, okay? The, what we have noticed is that when you take too much sugar, it's now leading to a type of liver problem called fatty liver. The body changes it, and then it becomes a type of fat. We call it triglycerides. And this fat will accumulate in the liver. And then the body will see it as something foreign, so it starts acting on it and then that can destroy the liver. That is different from the viral hepatitis. So too much sugar is not good. Too much of everything, as I said, is not good. But for alcohol and herbal medicines, we don't recommend it at all because of it's actually accentuating or accelerating the rate of destruction of the liver. Okay. Um my question is, uh, you, you did say that um, hepatitis B and C cannot be cured. It can be managed. Uh, but according to uh, natural medicine experts, they say that uh, it can be cured. So um, is there any explanation to that? Okay. So if I, let me explain why it cannot be cured. I'll be a bit technical, but I'm trying, I'll bring it down. Now, when the virus goes into you, especially hepatitis B and C, what they do is that they put part of their body into your natural yourself, so that any time your cells are multiplying, they are also bringing the virus. So to get everything out, you have to take all your cells out. And the only way to get all your cells out is to kill you. So hepatitis B and C, 
I said now we see is curable, so it's B that is not curable. Now what they do is they give the patients treatment. They'll tell you six months, you are cured. They don't check the amount of virus in the blood. They don't do anything to actually suggest that you are cured. They just tell you that you take this for six months and they come back to us, sometimes with complications because initially they were on orthodox medicines. They went and then they told them that, oh, stop, take this concoction and you have a cure. So they've taken it for six months. Years ago, they think they have a cure and then the complications start. So it is not true. If you read all literature, medicines, hepatitis B is not curable. Now C is curable. concerning um, statements made by our other colleagues. We are all uh, partners in the business of uh, giving people health. And so it usually becomes an issue where somebody is saying something uh, from the other side. You are careful not to condemn that person. But uh, the basic thing that I would like us to take home is the fact that two people, one the orthodox medicine practitioner, the doctor, and then the herbalist. He is saying that he will cure. Now, his medicines has no side effect. Then you come to the orthodox person and he says that my medicine does not cure. It controls. My medicine has side effect. It is basic that you run away from uh, Dr. A and go to herbalist B. But the fact is that have you first validated the statements that the two of them have said? How true are the statements that they are making? And that is one area that most of us fall short of. And one thing I always tell my patients is that no problem, you have two alternatives. When you came to Dr. A and he told you that you have blood pressure, he did take your measurement with uh, an apparatus. Probably that was even when you got to know you had the blood pressure and told you that his drug cannot cure but can control. When you went to the other side, did they check the blood pressure? Say yes. Okay. When he gave you the medicine, did you come back to check again whether it is gone? Most often, not. And they would continue to consume the product without even ever going back to check whether the blood pressure is actually gone like it is said. And till they finish the period that they are told that it will cure it, they finish it and they stay at home. The other doctor, the other practitioner tells you, okay, when you come every time, I will check and I will give you to control it. But then because that entails that the patient takes the drug all the time, and it's not a very exciting uh, aspect. So you end up realizing that you have a stroke on the other side. And most often, we don't find people even going back to the same people to tell them that, you, you told me that you cured me. Check my blood pressure. No. This time around, they come straight to the orthodox doctor. And so, probably what we should be doing is to try and find out whether what they said actually is the truth. That's what she's trying to point out. That if they say it's going to cure it, it means that it's not going to be in your blood again. After you have taken whatever, just go and check again to find out truly whether what the person said it is true or not. Most often, it happens that the understanding that probably the doctor would have concerning the fact that the thing is gone it's not the understanding that the person, the other person have. If you have, let's say, viral hepatitis and it makes your eyes yellow, the fact that the yellowness has disappeared does not mean that the virus has gone. The virus could still be there. So, if I give you something and the yellowness goes away, and I tell you, no, it is still there, and he gives you something and the yellowness goes away and tells you he has cured you, you are likely to believe him. 
But the point is that when you actually go and do the test, you realize that the virus is still there. So if you only take the chance to do that further step, to check what they are saying, then you would find for yourself whether the two persons who have spoken to you have, have actually told you the truth or not. That is a challenge I usually pose to the patients. Uh, because for you to believe either of them, it's in your domain and we cannot, nobody can force you to believe um, practitioner A or partner B. It depends on what you think of them and what you have done. I think that's, that's the explanation I'll give. Please, are there any more questions? You understood everything. Okay. So I'm going to summarize all that I have said. We first started with what hepatitis, viral hepatitis S, and then how hepatitis B is acquired. So we said it can be from a mother to a child through pregnancy, delivery. It can also be due to people, one person having it in the household, and passing it on to other people in the household. Or it could be the sharing of sharps like blades, razor blades, barbering things, etc., using needles, sharing toothbrushes, etc. That can also predispose you to getting the infection. Or tattooings, we like all sorts of drawings on our skin. And those needles have the potential of being infected and then passing it on to the next person. We talked about blood transfusion as one way of acquiring the infection. And then we also talked about sexual intercourse being another mode of transmission. And when we talk about sexual transmission, we mean man and woman as well as now we can't finish without talking about gays and lesbians. And it's more, also more common in gay populations as well. We are saying that for those who have the acute one, the short one that usually will disappear, they may have the jaundice, they may feel weak, etc. So, so for such patients, we actually restrict them in terms of oil and then proteins. But when the jaundice, everything is gone, we ask them to be on their normal diet. But those who have chronic viral hepatitis, where they just walk in and they are found to have hepatitis B or C, they are on normal diet. And investigations are done to determine whether they require treatment or not. Some people have hepatitis B, but the amount of virus in their blood is very low because their defense system, their natural defense system is fighting the virus. So they have very small quantities, sometimes so low that it will not have any effect on the liver. So for such patients, we actually monitor them every six months to see if their body's defense system is still able to keep it suppressed. However, those who have lots of the virus in their blood, these are potential patients that we put on treatment. And as we said, because it's not curable, sometimes the treatment may be lifelong. You take it for the rest of your life for hepatitis B. Now, we also said those who don't have hepatitis B, the best way, we say that provision is better than the kiosk, okay? So you have to prevent the infection. And how do we prevent the infection? We do that through vaccination. And we said you, when you take one vaccine today, you repeat it in a month, and then the third one should be six to 12 months after the second dose. So make sure you complete the three. Then you know you are protected. If you do all three, and the, drugs, the vaccine is potent, it can protect you for the rest of your life. We also say for pregnant women, we have ways, if the pregnant woman is positive, we have ways of preventing the child from getting it. Sometimes we have to treat the pregnant woman to reduce the amount of virus in the blood. And then when the child is born, the child is given two injections to protect that child so that the child will not acquire the infection. We also talked about the fact that if you have discordant couples, meaning that one positive, one negative, you can still go ahead and marry if the negative one goes for the vaccine, finish all three. So because when you are done with all three, you are protected. 
the one who is also positive will also be assessed. If the amount of virus is so high, then that person will have to start treatment to suppress. And in suppressing it, it protects your liver and then it also protects your partner. And we also said the whole viral hepatitis thing, the main effect is on the liver. And we talked about the important function of the liver. Most of the organs we have in our body are two. We have two eyes, two lips, two breasts, etc. But the liver is one. So we need to protect the liver. So if you are here and you don't have hepatitis B, you've done the test and you are negative, you have still not completed, go and have the vaccine. If you are here and you already have the virus, please come and let's take care of you so you don't develop any complications. Because sometimes there some of the complications, we can't do much about it, and that would be like a death sentence. So in a nutshell, what we have said is that hepatitis B is preventable. Hepatitis B can be suppressed such that your liver will be protected, and that will give you long life. And when you do all that, God will prosper you. Amen. 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 I want to say a big thank you to Dr. Ajoa Ajay. Hallelujah. We thank God for what we've learned. I believe that from here we'll take a lot of decisions for those of us who have not gone in for the vaccination so that our lives will be protected. Tomorrow we'll be here again and there'll be a talk on healthy lifestyle modifications by Dr. Gloria Folsen. So I want to encourage all of us to be here once again. Let's call people to join us here. Amen. Knowledge is power. And when we have the knowledge, I believe that God will help us by the wisdom he gives us to protect ourselves. Amen. Amen. Shall we be on our feet? screening um, materials, as we said yesterday. So those who are here who don't know their status, um, when you get to the back, there's a table set there. It will be checked for you for free. Amen. Yeah, we will say, you are set the table with you, but you are not a check. Amen. You are the only one who is 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 the only Somebody can cry, and yet be who cry, if you are crying, a boom. Nanso, and then internet, your bar, and tea, and several pounds of pain, and near the bomb pie, and say, I call her. My own bonsam, so Emma, also for mammy, em, mammy, why are dear pa? But only you and I also for mammy. So for mammy, you know, every near the Cassiano, and I was. Okay. Uh, let's put our hands together once again for them. We thank God. The, the, the screening, how long will it take? 20 seconds. Huh? What are we going to do? We'll lie down. Oh. Uh, uh, you pin you you put pin in. So I'm what you say. Oh, my dear. Pan ye be wo. We send kakrabi. Eh. Nti automatic. Obi ako ye. Ye pon. Stage no ever. Aha. 
Okay. Okay. And then the other thing, no. Treatment, no. Is it free of charge? Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> okay. Tell me what. Say we are positive uh, treatment, no. But you ask Kaka Kirby. Number uh, 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 Hey, just uh, uh, hi, Kaka. Okay. Hallelujah. Okay. You see, um, we are very grateful to you. Um, and uh, we are praying that tomorrow we'll come for the next uh, edition of our Health Week. Um, knowledge helps us. I yesterday I said it was hepatitis A, B, and C. Today it says A, B, C, D, and E. As I'm going home now, I'm going to educate my family. <laughs> that is more. But um, I'm praying that we'll get the cure for the hepatitis B also. By God's grace. So my my question. So those of those of us who go to uh, barber shops, professional barber shops, you know, how will we protect ourselves? We should take our own kit. We'll take our own kit, then the barber will also charge you. <laughs> 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 <It's>, <laughs> okay, so it's advisable to take your own kit. Your own, all right. Samwate. Munamoko Wazam is an Yamana. Lift up your two hands. Father, we thank you so much for tonight. We thank you for the knowledge you've given to us. We know that this knowledge. It's not to put fear in us, but to guide us, to give us wisdom to take the right decisions in our lives. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ that out of this knowledge we'll become better people. We ask, O oh Lord, that over and above what we've learned, you will protect us. You will preserve us. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ that you also order our steps we ask O oh lord that you protect our loved ones our families wherever they may be and as we leave this place we ask for your guidance we ask for your continuing covering and we ask O oh lord that it will be well with us may the lord watch over you may the lord strengthen you may the lord also protect and preserve you May everything that you do turn out well. May you have a good night's rest. May tomorrow be filled with testimonies. And may you know that because he lives, you shall also live. And we ask that the God from whom all good things flow will fill you with all goodness all strength all health and all prosperity in believing and it shall be well with you may jehovah perfect all that concerns you i pray tonight that if anybody came into this service weak discouraged wanting to give up tonight oh god let faith rise up in that person let there be healing let there be life in the place of death and we pray that as we plead the covering of the blood of Christ over us you will remember your covenant with us may the Lord bless and keep you may the Lord make his face to shine upon you 